Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. The gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Well, hello and a very warm welcome to the online worship for the Netherwent Ministry Area and to St. John the Baptist Church here in Penn Howe. It's wonderful to have you with us as we continue our journey through Lent. So let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. So we pray together. Almighty God, you fed your people in the wilderness and guided them by cloud and fire, given commandments to order their lives. Give us eyes to see your purpose, perseverance to follow where you lead, and courage to know the truth that sets us free, that our lives may be blessed and your will may be done. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So let us forgive one another from the depths of our hearts, and ask forgiveness from God, who is merciful and just, and cleanses us by the blood of Christ. So in the stillness, we call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him. Have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Through Christ, let us offer our sacrifice of praise to God. Let our lips proclaim his praise. Look on him and pardon me. Look on 
on him and pardon me. Behold him fair, the risen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of praise. From with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased with his blood, my life is sweet with Christ on high, with Christ my Saviour and my God, with Christ my Saviour and my God. I bow before the cross of Christ, and marvel at his love divine, God's perfect Son was sacrificed to make me righteous. reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. When the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down, it was dark. A smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. 
And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the dark clouds cover the sun, so it is easy to let the dark events of life hide us from the glory and the presence of God. It is then that we need to know that, even when we are lost and find ourselves wandering in the wilderness, that we are each in the hand of God and in the heart of his Son, who says to us, Do not be afraid. In our lives, we can sometimes experience a time of wilderness, even when, we, when our lives are busy, and we are in the midst of things. We can find ourselves struggling in so many different ways, and we may need to take some time away from our regular things, maybe to rest and relax, to reflect and to pray, to pray about a particular situation we find ourselves in. And after a time, we are able to turn, re return refreshed and are able to be strengthened and to look forward, remembering those words, do not be afraid. Today's Gospel reading starts with some Pharisees warning Jesus that Herod is out to kill him. These people may have been genuinely sympathetic to Jesus, or they may have possibly been on a mission for Herod himself intentionally seeking to frighten Jesus out of Herod's territory. Well, whichever was the case, Jesus's reply is uncompromising. With no respect for Herod, referring to him as that fox, Jesus tells the Pharisees to take a message back for him. And this is the message Jesus sent. Listen, I am casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. We must, I think, surely doubt that Herod ever received the message. But if he did, he probably, he probably would have thought it meant simply that Jesus would do as he pleased. If he wanted to stay three more days, then he would. But that wasn't all of the message, as Jesus' reply continues. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way to Jerusalem. This is where we touch on the theme of destiny in the life of Christ. Jesus has a clear awareness that he will meet his fate in Jerusalem, and his reference to three days is a reference to his time in the tomb. And the point is to tell us that Jesus' death by, dreadful, by the dreadful torture of crucifixion was no tragic accident that would bring his ministry to a premature and meaningless halt. No, rather, this was to be the moment, the moment above all other moments for which he had become incarnate. His death would be the climax of his life because in that death he, the sinless Son of God, bore the sins of all of us and paid the ultimate price of our rebellion against God. But if these offence will constitute a victory for Jesus, they will, he says, the, they will, he says, be a dis disaster for Jerusalem. For we heard these words. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophet and stones those who are sent to it. There is a stark contrast between Jesus, who fulfills his destiny, and the people of Jerusalem, who do not. And I think the question for us, is this, which category will we be found in? Will we stand with Jesus, seeking and fulfilling our destiny in and through him? 
Will we be faithful to God's purposes in Jesus Christ, even when we find ourselves in a wilderness period? Will we seek the indwelling power of God's Spirit to encourage and strengthen us in the difficult times? Indeed, are we prepared to suffer for, are we prepared to suffer for Jesus' sake as Jesus suffered for ours? Are we prepared to suffer for Jesus' sake as Jesus suffered for ours? We know that many Christians in many parts of the world suffer greatly. The loss of their homes, the loss of their liberty, and even the loss of their lives. But they count that as the price that must be paid to be true children of God. And thinking about a passage from one of our other designated readings for today, we read this in Paul's letter to the Philippians. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so I finish this morning with two questions. Firstly, what is your destiny? And what work is God calling you to do in the name of Jesus and for the kingdom of God? Amen. Let's affirm our faith in God together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Please respond after each intercession with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Firstly, Lord, may we remember the people of Ukraine who are caught up in the terrible and senseless aggression from Vladimir Putin and his allies. Please intercede and bring peace in the area and help the humanitarian effort that has taken place. Give wisdom and understanding to all the leaders as we broker the peace process. Bless the Ukrainian Defence Force and all who assist them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we'd like to say a prayer for ourselves and our families. Guide and lead us all to be better disciples and to follow the paths you have set for us. And when we fall off your path of eternal life, put us straight back on. May we be as shining lights to those around us either in a social, work or family setting. As St Francis said, spread the gospel and use words if necessary. Lord Jesus, may we always remember the parable of the Good Samaritan and to stop to help others with whatever their background or nationality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord Jesus, bless the Neverwind Ministry area and all those who are involved to support our 19 churches. Please also bless the online services that are being facilitated to reach those who cannot physically attend church. Please also bless the Worldwide Church and our local Monmouth Diocese. Bless Bishop Cherry and her team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we'd like to, say, we'd like to pray for the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic here in the UK and throughout the world. Thank you for your booster vaccines that we hope will make coronavirus become a thing of the past. Please protect us and our loved ones and friends from the pandemic. Please bless all who are leading the fight against the virus, including all NHS staff, research scientists, emergency services, care workers, volunteers, military personnel, and help our political leaders in the important decisions that they make. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, look after all those who are homeless or hungry, or refugees, and have no control of their lives due to alcohol or drug misuse. Remember the refugees from Syria, Afghanistan and Ukraine, and those who risk their lives crossing the English Channel from France. Please ensure that they find shelter and food to eat and bless all the aid agencies in the country and abroad that facilitate the help of these people. May we not just walk by and discount them. Those people that suffer from alcohol or drug misuse, may they seek help and find strength and support to get their lives back on track and leave their drug or alcohol dependency behind them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, take care of those who suffer from mental health issues. Help them to keep their lives on a firm footing and give them the peace the world cannot give. When life seems to get too tough for them, help them through. May we all remember the time that you, Lord Jesus, calmed the wind and the waves of the boat caught on the lake in the storm. Please, Lord Jesus, intercede and do the same for people with mental health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may we take a moment to remember those we love 
and know that I have departed this life and have gone to be with you. Come for all those who mourn and may we rest assured that we will be reunited in paradise with you. Remember especially Ted Garwood and the Hermanus family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, in a time of silence, remember in our prayers all who are known to us who are in any kind of need, isolation, sickness or adversity. And may, we all, and may also be physically or mentally disabled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, in the prayer that Jesus taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Provide the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I'll collect uh, our special prayer for this, the second Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant that all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion may reject those things that are contrary to their baptism and follow in the way of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, it's been really good to have you with us this morning, wherever you've been joining us from. I hope um, that your Lent is going well. Um, at the end of this service, um, there are a bunch of notices um, for you to see. They include details of our services in the coming week. Um, I also draw your attention to our, our Lent groups, which are meeting. We can dip in and out. We're doing a chapter of, of the, the book, um, The Things He Carried, um, each time. Um, so you can dip in and out. Um, don't worry if you've missed the first one. You can still join us for it. And there are a few times that that's happening in the week. We also have Stations of the Cross each week. Um, on a Thursday evening, uh, and that's moving around the area. So details of which church that's in this week uh, is at the end of this service. So we turn to the sending end. Cast your burden upon the Lord, he will sustain you. Create in us clean hearts, O God, renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, Take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us the joy of your saving help. Sustain us with your life-giving Spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Saved by faith and created in Christ for good works, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.